between these two cartridges. And I think one of the reasons that the 270 pulls ahead just a bit is it is an easier cartridge to shoot. Um, undeniable that the Ot6 is a more popular round. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Cartridge Talks, fully loaded. This is 270 V 30 Ot6. Ryan, I'm pretty excited about this one. Me too. I'm also, uh, I feel like I'm going to have a few airing of grievances on this one. Why? I don't know. I don't like the way it turned out. Oh, okay. Good point. And I wonder, is there, uh, is there any weight behind my feelings? Or, or is it just I've been accustomed to a certain line of thinking my entire life? And then it just kind of got upended. Here's what I think. I think the whole reason we have this podcast after the test is so that we can go back on everything that we said. So we can completely dispute our findings? 100%. Yes. Yeah. That way you can't be wrong. Exactly correct. Exactly correct. I like it. Uh, my personal history with these two cartridges, Ryan, which are still very popular and for good reason. Back when I was picking a first deer rifle, there might as well have only been two cartridges. You were going to get a 270 or a 30 out 6. Now, that might have been dictated by solely if you were a 270 or 30 out 6 family. Correct. Like your dad drove a Chevy, ergo you drive a Chevy. Right. Yep. And you all shot the same bullet. Yep. And that way you got to hunt and camp. Everybody got the same thing, which actually is still a pretty good strategy. I, I think. I think so, sort of, but yeah. Well, can be. Yeah, I think back in the day when the precedence for accuracy wasn't maybe what it is today. You know, like, ah, oh, Billy forgot his shells. Ah, Uncle Joe's got some. Yeah. Yeah. You have that yeah, precedence for accuracy, right? Uh, we've also come a long way with, like, how accurate just rifles are in general. Um, and then we didn't have, uh, I'm talking about a time, in this world where we didn't we didn't have rangefinders, they weren't a thing. So really extending your I'd say like kind of like your maximum point blank range. Sure. Was based primarily on just like I guess um bullet weight and velocity. Yep. And B C was never talked about. At least not in any circles I ran in. No. Well, I mean, these two cartridges predate you and I together if we combined our ages, probably. Right. Uh, but I'd say when it comes to uh, the deer woods, yeah. You know, the word I, we, I use the word iconic maybe too much, but if I was going to pick two iconic deer hunting cartridges, this is this is up there. These are up there. Yeah, nineteen oh six and nineteen twenty five, respectively. They've been around. Mm -hmm. The ammunition that we selected for this test. I feel represents uh, the deer hunter. One, yes. One old, one new. Yeah, we've got. Uh, what? How does that go? Something old, something new, something, something borrowed, borrowed something, blue. something blue. I think that's if you're going to get married. Oh, sure. I don't have anything. any announcements. I'm borrowing this. Okay. I don't have anything blue. But do you have an announcement to make? Are you getting married? No. Okay. Um. Yeah. First off, the Remington core locked. I mean, how long have we been opening up hunting literature and seeing the ads? The uh, the green and yellow motif, and I, as long as I can remember, I mean, being a kid for a fish and game, outdoor life, field and stream, all of them. You peel a page open, and there it is, core locked. <gasps> the deadliest mushroom in the woods. I mean, that ad campaign alone, just <laughs> genius. Yes, genius. Uh, it's what I started shooting. I shot probably my first three deer with a Remington core lock, something like that. Yep. Uh, great bullet. Does the job. It does. Kills deer dead. Uh, economical. Yeah. You know, compared to, you know, maybe some more, uh, quotation mark premium options that are out there. Certainly. And then we also shot the Winchester Copper Impact. It's a new loading, newish loading. Yeah. It's been out for, for a spell, but not, not a very long time. We're seeing a lot of folks 
ammunition manufacturers going with a, a homogenous bolt design mm-hmm. um, for whatever reason, be that, um, you know, state legislation stating that you have to. Be that being forced. Yep. Uh, or for perceived terminal performance. Of course, spoiler alert, you know, I'm a fan of copper. Um, I am as well, but I don't want to be forced to use it. Correct. Uh, I don't know. To me, it just comes down to like what's going to work best for your rifle and the application. Correct. Um, but an economical copper option. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. And every man's copper. Yeah. Yep. There you go. What else, Ryan, with these? I just think that this is, uh, as I sit and I reflect, like when the 270 came out, I have to imagine that it may have been received much like the 6.5 Creedmoor was received. In Do you think so? I, well, I mean, look, think about it. So you hold a 30 out 6 in your hand, you're like, there it is. That's as good as it gets. John Moses Browning. And then you see 270, you're like, the hell is this? Uh, you know, smaller, smaller bullet. Lightweight, 150 grain at the max, 130 grain, fairly standard. And people were probably thinking, you can't do anything with this. I mean, maybe. At least that is how I felt. But the velocity. It's not about the velocity. (laughs) It's It's flat. It's about retention. It is flat. I mean, that's like, I mean, when I, people would be like, Okay, like the here's how you would choose two seventy odd six. Are you going to hunt deer and elk? If you check yes, probably the thirty odd six, but the two seventy will do that handily as well. Sure. Uh, are you placing a precedence on uh, velocity and flat shooting? If yes, get the two seventy. Yep. That's it. I mean, and really, you look at uh, I got the two seventy. That's what I shot in our little uh, experiment here. I mean, you know, box posted. Let me find it here. This is a a one thirty grain core locked at the muzzle, Ryan. Thirty sixty. Yeah. For a one thirty grainer. That's no slouch. No, certainly not. It'll kick the tar out of a hundred and thirty grain six five Creedmoor. What's, all day. What long. what's your box posted on the oh, uh these are twenty seven hundred. Twenty seven hundred. Yep. For a one eighty grain hot six core lock. Correct. Yeah. Um what these, uh, I know we talked about this before. Yeah, and this one's right at right at three thousand for a one thirty. Twenty nine twenty for the old uh, one fifty. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. That's a one fifty grainer. Yep. What did we? Uh, what did the testing show? Right. Well, the testing show that these are remarkably similar cartridges. <laughs> 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 and that they're that they're fairly interchangeable with anything you want to do, as you just stated, and it stands uh, to reason the two seventy came from the thirty out six. There's not a massive difference in bullet diameter. There is a discrepancy in bullet weight depending on how you do this. I mean, you can get a 130 grain projectile for your 30 out six. You can get a 150 grain projectile for your 270. Um, and you know, you can get them really close to doing the exact same thing. You'll have some trade off one way or the other. Um, the testing showed, best I can summarize, is that the more shootable cartridges that shoot a little bit flatter generally fare better based on our testing criteria. Based on our criteria. Correct. Which? I'll make this argument all day long. I'm not saying that I plant my flag in the buy a 270 because I have made public statements before about never owning a 270. I'll never do it. That's probably not true. And it's yeah, only... It's, I don't even think that's a good idea. No, and it's really, it's just so I can be a stinker because my hunting partner... I may have recounted this story before, recanted the story before. We, we're we driving on a gun run. We're going to go, we're going to do, per, you know, purvey the wares, or maybe I'm saying that right. We were looking to see what people were selling at a couple of sporting goods stores. Okay. I was saying. And as we often do. Surveillance. Yeah. As we often do, we debate the merits of given cartridges or rifles or what have you. And he told, he told me, as we're pulling into the parking lot, one of these days, you're going to walk into a gun shop. You're going to go to the used aisle, and there it'll be, Ryan. There it'll be the absolutely perfect rifle for you at an unbelievable and undeniable price. You'll have to buy it. It'll be chambered in a 270. And I was like, I'm throwing my truck in gear. I'm like, it'll never happen. We walked into that shop. There was a Weatherby Mark V Fiber Mark chambered in 270 
for a price so ridiculous that I had to say yes, and I bought it. And I owned it for a short amount of time and sold it to him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was hot. That was the only 270 I'd ever owned. Um, but I really have no like ill or bad things to say about the cartridge. It's a wonderful cartridge. The best shot I've ever seen on a game animal in person was him shooting a whitetail with a 270 at 572 yards. And it was beautiful. Um, and that was, here again, an inexpensive cup and core bullet. It was not a core locked. It was a federal loading. But um, just absolutely did the job. And it's a fine cartridge. I just ha- I have to say it just to be a stinker. That's all. So I've never owned a 270. Growing up, uh, my grandpa had a, an Ot 6 and a 270. Uh, my dad's primary deer and elk rifle was a 270. Uh, and then when I got my first rifle, I got an Ot 6. When I got my second rifle, I got an Ot 6. My brother, uh, same thing. Yep. So it's like uh, dad and grandpa. And I don't really know. The reasoning behind it. It's just the way it was. It's just the way it was. I, I think actually, so my grandfather yeah. uh, bought, I think off his neighbor or a garage sale or something. I don't know what the heck he got. But he, so he bought a couple uh, Remington Game Master mm. 7600s. Sure. Uh, and so that, so he bought those for my brother and I. Yeah. And I, they, I guess they were odd six. Do you so that's still why have they the were, gun? I do, yeah. I like that. My uh, mine was the version that had kind of uh, I don't know I just I, maybe I'm not going to describe this properly like kind of like the scrolled forend sure uh, it's pump yep and then my brothers had like the hash marks corn cob yeah did your brother still have that gun yes he doesn't want it anymore <laughs> why so I want it um, why do you want it well those are nice guns you don't like the one that I have. No, I do. It just depends on what kind it is. If it's old or new. Not that it matters. Seven sixties and seventy six hundreds are cool guns. You know, I guess I don't know. I'd have to look at it. There's, I think it's a seventy six hundred. Yeah, there's a uh, tremendous amount of nostalgia surrounding those rifles. And I think that uh represent a, a really iconic piece for the uh especially deer hunter. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the North American big game hunter, but the deer hunter. That is a deer hunter's rifle. Um my perception growing up was that man i needed a repeater oh naturally so i had that you know we were hunting uh always talk about it you know kind of thick country we do kind of like pushes yep. every now and again or you might think that you're going to jump up a buck and need to take a you know a running shot at a reasonable distance or things like that and i'm like man i need that fast follow which i think i've moved away from because you can run a bolt pretty darn quick. yep uh, but it's interesting how culture dictates what is in vogue at a given time. Oh, that was like, yeah. for me, Yep, that was like a must. And then I'd see guys out hunting blacktails with a bolt gun. I'm like, fools. What, why would you put yourself at this kind of disadvantage? It. Yeah. But they really are remarkably similar cartridges. And not that we just summarized it in the first 13 minutes, but if you do want a little flatter trajectory and you do want a rifle, it's a little bit easier to shoot. And the 270 is the answer. If you're looking for a green weight and a little bit more horsepower, it's the odd six. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll make an argument, though. Um, bullet technology changes everything, right? So right. a good bullet goes a long way, and you can you can blend those lines. Like I said, I used to shoot almost exclusively 30 odd six mm-hmm. um, when I had far fewer rifles um, to my name, and I shot 130 green projectiles out of them, uh, barns, and they were smoking. I mean, wait, you would shoot 130s out of your OT6? You bet I would. Yeesh, what was that cooking? Uh, just just under 32. Flat. And they'd hit hard. Pull one of the. Uh, <laughs> See, yeah. Your OT6 cool yeah, blocks out of there. No big deal. Brace yourself, Mark. It's the same, but different. Oh, for, oh my God! If that's not foreshadowing, if you <laughs> I was gonna say this, if same you didn't thing. see what just happened, Mark knocked intentionally, I believe, my cartridge no. down. Yeah, they're not that different. No, they're the same, but different. Point is, um, both are let's wonderfully. Get, let's get these in the, in the right box. Yeah, both are wonderfully adept big game cartridges, and and uh, you know 
not just here in the States, but across the, the world too. I think both of these cartridges have been renowned as a outstanding African Plains game round either. Uh, a lot of guys shooting them in um, certain places of the world for some of the capra species like say Ibex or various goats or sheep or whatever have used them both. Um, 30 out 6 of course is a storied history uh, for our nation as a military cartridge. 270, no. But they they get the job done for medium game. No sweat. I'm certain there's been a considerable amount of moose, caribou, elk, larger cervids taken with them, and I'm I'm certain a lot of black bears and brown bears and who knows, maybe even a polar bear here and there. Oh, I would uh, I would have to think so. I mean, I've heard, you know, red, you know, even like outfitters in Alaska, they're like, hey, I'd rather you have an ot six you can shoot. Yeah. And I'm talking big critters, yep. moose, brown bears, grizzlies, versus, you know, uh, meganum yeah. that you can't shoot. Yeah. And, I, and that was something I was going to say earlier is I'm, I harp on this quite a bit. Folks will write in and they'll say, like, hey, what, what cartridge should I get? And it's a really hard question to answer because there's not necessarily one correct answer and the rest are incorrect. But the cartridge that you can shoot the best is the one that you should get. And, and for that reason that Mark just stated alone is if you can Within reason. Yeah. I mean, if you can't shoot it reliably and repeat it, repeatedly, it's no good to you. I mean, it just kicks the tar out of you and... And that sucks. You'll never get handy with it. And that's a mistake that I made. One of the first rifles I ever had built was a 300 Weatherby, and it was just disgusting. Still is. I still have the gun. I don't ever shoot it because it just absolutely is horrible to shoot. And I don't shoot it that well. And then my confidence is low in it. Um, I hope this goes where it's supposed to go is, is kind of what comes to mind. Um, and between these two cartridges, and I think one of the reasons that the 270 pulls ahead just a bit is it is an easier cartridge to shoot. Um, undeniable that the Ot6 is a more popular round, and it should be. It was unseen for 20 years prior. It saw military service. It became synonymous with being one of the most fantastic big game hunting rounds on the planet. Um, our friends in Europe use them. Our, well, our friends all over the globe use them. Um, yeah, there's going to be a few more factory loaded options out there uh, than, than the 270, but the 270 is no slouch. Mm-hmm. No slouch. Well, and, you know, and we talk about there's a, a versatility component sure. in the uh, in our, you know, testing parameters. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it accurately describes versatility in practice. Sure. Uh, I would just be more comfortable. Like if you said, Mark, you've got to pick between these two cartridges and you were going to travel the globe. Yeah. And shoot potentially anything. I know emphatically I'm bringing an odd six. Sure. Absolutely. And that's not, that's not bad logic. I think not at all. You know, the flavor of ammunition that you can get chambered in odd six two is just wild. You know, at one point in time you could buy from Remington, the accelerator rounds. No, Remember those? I always want them. 55 grain soft point in a little Sabo. And they were just flying warp speed. They shot horribly. Oh, I don't of, think they yeah, you hit the broadside of a bullet. Out of probably. anything I ever tried them out of. Remington 700, Savage Model 110. Uh, I'm trying to think if I ran that. Was those two guns, um, they just shot terrible. I was very close to buying accelerator Sabos and trying to load them. I thought, this is stupid. I was just buying a 223. <laughs> <laughs> and my buddy, my buddy had one. He is a Savage Model 110, old gun, uh, pre accu trigger. And he didn't have the coin for a varmint gun. We started calling coyotes quite a bit. And so it came to the gun shop I worked at, and he's like, what should I shoot coyotes with? It's like, just shoot these soft points. I don't want to blow them up. Let me get these accelerators that are going like 3,400 feet per second. That'll blow them up. Um, and, uh, God, they just shot like trash. Uh, but it was cool to speak to the the flexibility of the cartridge. Like, there was, at one point in time, an option for a, a Sabode 22 caliber projectile. Now, if that isn't some Buck Rogers stuff, I mean, <laughs> here's a, here's a thirty out six. I cannot believe you used Buck Rogers. Yeah, man. Here's a thirty Good out show. six. I've never seen it. I've only heard it referred to. Um, but you could buy a fifty five grain. I mean, I barely remember that show. I don't remember it all. I've, I've never seen it. I think I I've just, seen an episode. I'm just stealing lines. Like uh, it was probably on a television that didn't have a remote. No, you had to go up and manually tink yeah. tink tink. You know, like ten channels. Yeah. 
Do I bore you? No, I, it's, it's been a long weekend, Mark. We had some tornadic weather up here. It was a little bit... Uh, it was hairy. Yeah, a lot yeah. of wind, yeah, a lot of rain. We got some well-needed rain. That's um, true. But anyways, we digress. We're sitting here droning on and on and on about these two cartridges, which everybody's probably fairly intimately familiar with. Uh, I think they're both great. I think, you know, we want a little flatter trajectory and you don't want to hand load your ammunition like I did with the 130 grain barns or something along those lines. Is get a 270. It'll kill everything you want to point it at um, within reason. Uh, if you're looking for a bit more beef in the bullet category, the odd six. It's got room for more mass. And that's great. I'll say this. You know what I'm really excited for is um, it's been kind of a little resurgence in the .277 caliber in the past couple of years. Big time. Right? So we've got cartridges like the 277 Sig Fury and 6.8 SPC. Um, it was kind of a flash in the pan for a little bit. A lot of guys still hot on that down south. Um, 6.8 Western. Mm-hmm. Um, even 270 Wisdom. I've started to hear people talking about that cartridge again. Really? Yeah, which is cool. Killed my first mule deer with the 270 was I mean, excuse me, 27, 27 Osler. Osler. 27 yep. Osler, yeah. Um, faster twist. I mean, really modernizing the caliber, you know. Mm-hmm. Faster twist, handling heavier bullets, higher BCs. Um, you know, something interesting to point out is 270. .277 is actually 7 millimeter. It's I was going to say, so there's also one other new kid on the block. Which... 7 millimeter PRC. Oh, yeah, but that's a different 7 millimeter. 277 is a 7 millimeter, is what I'm saying. Just a, oh. it's a different 7 millimeter. But barely a 7 millimeter. But we just never refer to it as a 7 anything. Right. Yeah. So um, it's just, it's neat to see that caliber coming in into scene here, which is cool. It is cool. Yeah, and and who knows? Maybe we're going to start seeing some fast twist 270 Winchesters. You know, we've talked about the 6.8 Western before. Here's a, a cartridge that you know took a, a pretty successful design and mm-hmm. then optimized it so that it can handle a heavier weight bullet. For these fast twists exploit that BC. Um, maybe a little bit more difficult to do with the standard 270 case uh, mm-hmm. if you're a hand loader. And you've got a faster twist barrel, boy, you can have a hell of a cartridge out of that rascal. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then odd six is odd six. Everybody knows it. Everybody loves it. I, I'm, you know, I'm probably going to get another 270. You just said you didn't want one. Oh, yeah, but it's kind of a joke. It's a good cartridge. It's a great cartridge. I think, um, I think it'd be a fun one. But that's that. Let's cut stuff apart. Let's do it. So let's go. If you didn't watch the video, which I would suggest you go watch the Cartridge Talks video, which this is also a video, but that one's more of a video. This is a video and podcast. It's a videoed podcast. Uh, I suggest you do. I think it's pretty entertaining. I think watching projectiles enter jello is always entertaining. Oh, it's a hoot to do. And what are the, uh, let's recap the categories that the uh, 271. Sure. Line. Uh, well, let's go down through all the categories first and foremost. Okay. So there's shootability. Which is basically a definition of how controllable that rifle is, validated by foot pounds of energy that it would generate mm-hmm. in an eight pound rifle. Right. Now we're not talking about adding muzzle brakes or just if, if all we knew about the rifles weighed eight pounds um, and did not have a semi automatic action, which your 30 out six did. So I was just, I, okay, I'm, after we talk about shootability, I'm gonna ask you a question. Sure. Um, so you look at the bullet's mass, uh, the projectile velocity, and the charge weight of the case, like how much powder would that thing have in it, um, and then the weight of the system that it's firing. You can come up with a, a calculation of foot-pounds of recoil energy. And so side-by-side, side, 271. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It stands to reason. Here again, lighter mass bullet. I mean, I was shooting the 270. I wanted. I wasn't rooting for it. There. It is and I've got it nothing is. against it. I like it. I just, you know. Right. Um, then there's accessibility, which is uh, six major ammunition manufacturers. We pull them. We look at their factory offerings at press time. How many unique loadings did Winchester, Federal Barnes, Hornady, Nosler, Remington, Winchester, Federal Barnes, Remington, Hornady, Nosler. That's all of them. That's them all. Um, have. At, at press time. Right. Well, 30-odd-6 won that one. 
by kind of a large margin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, that makes sense. Um, there's versatility, which we're looking at bullet styles. And so that's everything from picture a Hornady VMAX on your Predator end of the spectrum, a match hollow point boat tail, a bonded bullet, a standard cup and core, a homogenous design, you name it, a bullet style to do a certain thing. 30 out 6 won that one. Mm-hmm. And then it came to drop and drift. So we go to 500 yards. We're using this ammunition for the test. And again, we can skew this data by changing the ammunition. Mm-hmm. So if I hand load, I can get, we can, we can flip flop, right? All I got to do is make a bullet selection. And uh, this is factory ammo as tested. As tested, the 271 drop and drift. And as tested, terminal performance, which we're looking at depth of penetration. Mm-hmm. And we're looking at the cavity itself, like how how violent and explosive is that cavity? Um, you know, how goofed up did it make that gelatin block? The two seventy kind of won that too. Consider my silence arbitrary. No, I just I disagree. I, hey, listen. I, like, I know what I see. I don't. I, know I don't disagree. I don't disagree with you. I I think that any way you skin this cat, you'll have a different result, depending on how you skin it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't think that the 270 is a better cartridge than the 30 out six. I also don't think that the 30 out six is a better cartridge than the 270. If we're just speaking like holistically, if we get specific, and you tell me. You want a cartridge to go air out a pronghorn. Hey, I'm thinking you might have a better time with a 270. Yeah. If you're the one gun guy, that's it. And you you have plans and aspirations to hunt from the north woods of Michigan to the deserts of Arizona to Alaska and to Georgia. Get a 30 out six. Think of all the things you can do with it. Yeah. And I think I think that's really, you know, the bones of it. Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you this, you know, one thing our test did for me, though, is it certainly, in my mind, proved the, uh, the 270s, no slouch, that's for sure. No, definitely like not. It, it had a little more, uh, oomph than I thought it would. Yeah. It's a fantastic I don't know why, cartridge. though. It's like I said, convention. I mean, we see a smaller diameter bullet that weighs less and we automatically think worse. hmm Yeah. You know? And I, I don't know that that's sound logic, but that's what we do, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and for possibly no good reason. It's just in America, we think things are better if they are bigger. Sometimes that's true. Yes. Sometimes that's not true. We got the, uh, the core locks here. Yeah. That's what we're looking at right now. Yes. Ooh, I just, I struck my mic on the table. What an amateur maneuver. Yeah. So you look at the uh, 270, it snuck out a little bit more penetration. About an inch. Yeah, not much. Um, wound cavity on the 270, depending on what angle you're looking at it. Uh, God, they're like equal. I hate this part of this. I hate this part of this. I know. They're like the same. Obviously, the 30 out 6 having a larger frontal area is going to displace more tissue. It having more mass is going to drive through harder mediums. So, again, heavy hide bone and muscle. Mm-hmm. Mass is your friend. Uh, terrible. Like, ah, this is such a. Why do we do this to ourselves, Boardman? I don't know. It's the same. It's just different. Do you want trajectory? Let me, let me confirm the top. I can't really see that good here. The top one is 270. The 270. Yeah. Let's slice and dice. Let's slice and dice. Okay. Yeah. Both uh, both bolts lost some material material along the way. They did. I um, think not 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 to be unexpected with this projectile, right? And I think the the two seventy seems to have lost lost a bit more. Um, and I think part of that is it's hitting that block quite a bit faster. Impact velocity. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna tear some stuff off. So, um, yeah, please do the honors, Ryan. Mark, stand by, and we're back. Well, we've excised the projectile from the block. <clears throat> a couple things right off the bat here. This is the um, this is the two seventy one thirty grain. It's gonna be a hard Remington. 
or locked. If you can get a maximum across the flats here. Five eight seven five, and of course at one time it was bigger, before it uh, folded back in on itself. Sure. So launched weight was one hundred and thirty grains for this core lock. Recovered weight is ninety three point three. As Mark had mentioned, we lost a bit of material on the way. Now, and we I think we talked about this in the video as well. Yeah. Like, I generally my mindset is like, eh, I don't love that. But I also know all those little fragments did little nasty things as they sure. departed the main projectile. Yeah. I don't think um, I don't think it's like they're going, you know, a fragment of that size. Probably not. If you shot, if you tuck that right behind the shoulder, that fragment's probably not making it to the spine. But if you were a few millimeters from an artery, there's a good chance you might have severed it with a fragment. That's you know possible. What I mean? Yeah. So certainly secondary projectiles do a good thing. Looks like we might have restabilized here at 93.5. 93.5. 93.5. Yeah. Sounds like radio station. Yeah. Well, 93.5. Today's hits tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's a 270, 130 grain core locked. And uh, about, the, about the performance that we'd probably expect, right? Yeah. So um, 270, 130 grain core locked. Cool. All right, should we uh, extract the old hot six? Mark, do the honors, would you? I will. All right, headset's back on. I don't know if we'll use this part or not, but we just pulled the hot six, 180 green core locked. 174.1. Now, that was before we removed some of the uh, gel material that the uh, projectile kept with it. Going to do a little comparison here and see if. Uh, well, it's certainly going to have more mass. I mean, it's given. No, I just the if there's a discrepancy when we pull the uh, gel material, it is all sure. I'm, I'm sure. All right, so we've picked out a fair amount of material, although it doesn't amount to a whole heck of a lot. Ah, three grains. Okay. Not nothing. No. 171 and a half. 171 and a half. Yep. Uh, this what, is a, what a beautiful mushroom, though. Oh, it is. Let's, get a, let's get a diameter. Yeah. That that's that's going to be uh, substantially different. 7835. So 7835 in the OT6. And uh, you watch me spit out a different measurement than the 270. I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to call this? Uh, 0.650. It's just easier to call it 0. 0.650. Okay. So definitely you hold them in your hands. You're like, yep, 30 out 6, way bigger. Um, and not just because it's a 30 caliber versus a 270, but uh, it, it definitely expanded. Oh, lost a little piece of lead from the out 6. Up oh, and dropped it in my coffee cup. We'll get to that later. <clears throat> I'll just refill it and forget about it. But That's just roughage. Yeah. So... Yeah, you, you're getting quite a bit more retained material out of this particular projectile, and I, I guess I'm not surprised to see that either. No. Right? Um, certainly both of these have killed more deer than I will ever hope to in my entire life um, if I started hunting whitetails tomorrow and didn't stop. They work. I mean, what else is there to say, Mark? There are just two fine cartridges doing great things. And again, like we just shot them at 100 yards, right? Um, so we're considering performance at 100 yards in a lot of ways, uh, accuracy at 100 yards in a lot of ways. I will say uh, Rick's 270, yeah. which is just a Ruger, what, M77? Model 77 Mark II. Nothing fancy. Nope. Shoots good, though. But it sure shot well. It does. It does. And I, I think it kind of proved to me, you know, I guess we didn't do any extensive accuracy testing mm -hmm. but eric was like oh yeah you're doing core locks yeah that's what i've got that thing it should be sighted in for those and then boy if that didn't just punch the x-ring right right in it yep so yeah i don't know you were going to make a mention about semi-automatic and muzzle brakes oh and when we were talking about uh taking it back a notch yeah. to shootability yeah so you shot my browning bar yes not six yeah with the boss system yeah Rest in peace. 
what did you think about the shootability of that rifle as it's set up? And it's not a light, it's not a heavy rifle, but it's not a light no. rifle. No, um, certainly palatable. Yeah. Certainly palatable. No doubt about it. And it's a semi-automatic, you know, right. gas-operated gun. It's bleeding recoil off very rapidly um, through its, you know, actuation and mechanisms. And then that boss system on there is a functional muzzle brake when it's when it's in that form. Um, and it was very pleasant to shoot. Big squishy, you know, kind of womp mm-hmm. more than a punch. Um, cantankerous rifle, though, let me tell you. A uh, lot, lot of bang, whiz, flash, pop going on when you pull the trigger on that rascal. Let me ask you this. Yo. Because I have permanent hearing damage from that rifle. Yeah. Um, when it comes to brakes, is that one, like, exceptionally loud? No. It sure seems like it. I feel like it's louder than the other ones we've shot. Braked, unbraked. If the gun isn't suppressed, it's loud. I guess. Rock your world loud. Um, that's it. That's just long and short of it. And if you're shooting without hearing protection, which I do the majority of the time when I'm hunting, yeah, it's bad. So I try to remember to put it in. It never happens for I me. I don't always. I, I think a couple of times I'm like, you know, I'm going to be a real smart aleck and I'm going to carry hearing protection with me in the field. I just completely forget that I have it by the time I get to the spot I'm going to hunt. Throw them in the center console of the truck, park the truck, walk away from the truck for several days and come back and be like, oh, it's ringing a little bit louder. I put them in my, some sort of, you know, quotation mark, easy to fast oh, access. Yeah. Center console is usually pretty fast access. And, well, well, and that's generally where you're shooting from, so. True. <laughs> that's a joke. Now, Mark, um, we didn't just shoot one bullet, we shot two. This is correct. Yeah. yeah it's new copper impact, which is a really cool looking bullet. I'll say that. They've got quite the cartoonish red tip on them. When you look at it, that is a large red that tip. That is something. Yeah. I, I, it's one of the biggest. It reminds me, you know, Barnes has a bullet, uh, uh, 110 grain TAC TX for the 300 AAC. Okay. It's got a big, long black tip on it. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. It kind of reminds me of those, except that is red. Every one of them has a little bubble right in the, right in the middle of it. I'm certain that was probably just a function of manufacturing. I'd be curious, though, if there was some sort of secret sauce up to that bubble. See that in there? I do. Remember that scene from Jurassic Park when they're, he's, oh, he's looking yes. at the amber and there's like an insect stuck in the amber? I'd say at least in the two that I'm comparing side by side right now, they are pretty uniform. Oh, yeah. They all do like it. As far as size and placement. Every one of these rascals I've ever looked at, red bubble. I've got a couple friends that have killed some deer with uh, this bullet. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Jurassic Shall we Park. grab the uh, the two set or the uh, both. copper gels? The both. Yes, the both. Let's do it. All right. We are back. And if you're watching on YouTube, you might immediately notice that you, Ryan and I are very obscured by gels stacked three high. That's right. We have three gels for uh, for this portion of the test run. I'm going to step from behind the gel. You're going to stay. Uh, oh no! This is the this is the uh, copper component of the test. Uh, this is probably our worst performance in gelatin shooting to date. W- why? Well, you know, I kind of shagged the shot on the uh, first out six. Hit a little high on the block. Bullet left the building. Yeah, we're trying to. I mean, when we think about how what we do to sight in a rifle and how uh, particular we are. And then you're having to sight in a single rifle to essentially shoot two different loads the same. It didn't um, work out. It didn't work out. Not that well. But yeah. I, we, we corrected. Now, curiously, in the middle, the middle block here, um, there's a 270 projectile that almost got all the way out. Lots of penetration. Lots of penetration. Not a drop of expansion. No. Not even that a was little the, bit. The 270 copper impact. It was. We essentially immediately fired another. Yeah. That did beautifully it did but that's uh it's very curious currents it's curious to the point where i want to and we haven't yet maybe maybe that maybe we'll be able to do some sort of uh additional follow-up well, where we fire you know the rest of those projectiles can i, I kind of want to cut that out can i have that big knife yeah i'm just going to take that i just i'm curious we're not going to need it for long no it's just gonna 
I'm going to go ahead and assume that that was an anomaly. I just have to think that it was. Yeah, it's a very curious anomaly, though. You know this is probably not going to work the way I want it to, but I I just want to know what does that red tip weigh. That's all. Because the tip fell off pretty much. That's all that happened, though. Can you get to it? Oh, oh yeah. Boy, you got I, I got it right on the heel of the bullet. There we go. <clears throat> so that is a 100% not expanded projectile. Let me see this thing. It's just a bullet. Unbelievable. I mean, not even... In a, fact, the tip is bro, still it, it's, in there. It's kind of broke part off. Of it. yeah. yeah, it's broke off. Right at the bubble. You can see the bottom of the bubble that we were talking about earlier. So uh, that one's .277 in diameter. And it weighs... 128.6 grains, 28.7. This is like a, you know. A 1.3 grain. Tip. Yeah, it was weird. Super weird. And, I, and by no expansion, I mean nothing. It just didn't do anything. We'll just set that one aside. Curious. It is curious. Um, so, yeah, these are the copper impacts, and right away, you see what we've seen with every single one of the copper projectiles that we fired in the test thus far. Um, better penetration than the lead. Uh, the wound cavities, in my opinion, look better. Um, curiously, you think they're better? I do. Like in what way? Um, so if you look at like the 270, this one's a little bit deceptive. You have to view it from the top. It's wider, and then it's longer, and then it. You know, with a lot of the lead projectiles, you don't get such a distinct line from the bullet's path. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes invisible. With the coppers, you can always see the line. So Because those petals are just slice, 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 slice. I don't want to keep uh, beating a dead horse or focusing on the negative here, but here's a curious observation from the bullet that did not expand. It's actually got... Quite a channel. Consistent disruption throughout the block, and actually more so than the one that did expand it for a large stretch. Well, sort of. It's not as bold, but it is longer. And I think that's because if you look at the front of the block, the tip broke off like an inch into the block. Mm -hmm. So we had a very high speed, very blunt nose projectile tearing through there. Would it have been terminal? I reckon, likely. Um, would it have been the result I wanted? No, it would not. The bullet then inverted at probably the 30 inch mark. Uh, you can see where it did a full dip. Sure, did a turn. Yeah. Yep, and the bullet was facing backwards in the block. So finally, that resistance was enough to overcome the trajectory, and the bullet yeah. flipped. Um, what do you say we fish out the 130 copper I impact? Would. Can you just be careful of your arm? There, yeah, please. no sweat. Thanks, Mark. Safety first. Little incision here. Ooh, got it. Careful. It's fine. It's copper. You know I am about the stuff. Going with Mark, would the, you uh, mind bracing the wall of oh, jello? Oh, I reckon I could do that. I, I like to watch you struggle. Thanks, buddy. That's this, why we make such a great team. Is this providing <laughs> enough resistance? Yeah. There you go. There it is. Nice work. That's 130 grain copper impact. And I mean, it looks just like we want. That is a uh, textbook. Uh, yeah, that's beautiful. 5.465. It says right there. Okay. No joke. 5.465. We'll round up. 5.47. Okay. So 100, 130 grain was the fired weight. Recovered weight was 128.0. Wow. Yep. 127.9, 128.0. Well, I jostled the table there. So let's just say the tip weighs two grains. I yeah. think that's a safe bet, right? Um, and then, of course, it's just every bit of that bullet that could be retained is retained. It is there. Sans tip. Um, and it looks just like we expect copper projectiles to look. Wound cavity, certainly deeper. I think a little bit more violent up front. 36 and a half on that one. That's deep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Added, um, let's see here, 22 and a quarter for contrast. People have said, well, that's wasted. That's wasted space. I don't know. I've killed a lot of stuff with copper, and it just it hits different. It just hits different. Well, but also, like, now, I, here's what I would say, though. It's doing a great job for you, Yeah. but it's also what you've been using. 
Hey, I've killed a lot of stuff with other bullets, though. Lately, though? In recent memory? Um, yeah. 2019, I was using Acubon long ranges. That's a great bullet. Um, killed a couple critters with the LDXs. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I shoot a lot of those. I shoot Just keeping you honest? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it is what it is, Mark. Um, so we were talking about bullet changes. Bullet changes making the difference. And versatility. Is the 270 Winchester an elk cartridge? Mark, I've never killed an elk. You've killed several, right? Couple. Couple. Okay. They're kind of my arch nemesis. Were they archery animals or guns? Uh, rifle. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about, well, we kill things with archery equipment every year, right? They do matrix matrix type things for my arrows. Oh, yeah. They put trees in front of my arrows. They do all sorts of nasty things. Uh, They conjure obstacles while the arrow's in flight. Um, Nonetheless, people do kill big game animals with archery tackle every year, Um, which, you know, if if we're going to get hooked up on the energy topic, if that's the metric that we use to kill things with, which it's not for me, or the velocity topic that's not what kills it either um our tree tackle still works but i would in a heartbeat have no reservations hunting something the size of elk with a 270 with the right bullet and a bullet like this copper impact Mm -hmm. or similar bullets hornady cx gmx nosler e-tip barnes ttsx lrx tsx Mm mm-hmm um, would all be my first choice, premier choice, because they do punch through things like bone, like heavy muscle tissue. Um, they generally track very true, as this indicates, uh, through whatever medium you push them. Uh, they generally don't shed hardly any mass, and they drive, 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 and they just absolutely shred stuff up on the inside. It so, did a nice job. It did. Um, I think we're we, – how are we going to attack? Boy, we couldn't have put that out six more centralized in that block. I think we can probably stab it out of there. I'm going to set my headset down for this what's one. It, uh, what's it saying on a penetration uh, length uh, there? The odd six goes 31 and three quarters. 31 and three quarters, uh, yep. which I would say that – and the uh, permanent wound cavity is – It's big. Big. Yep. It's nasty. Big. Let's um, – I'd say considerably large. And what the heck? I felt like I was thinking they were the same before. Well, you got to look I at the 270 the from same. the top. Look at the 270 from the top. Oh, there's more to the story. Mark's juxtaposed. He's back on the 270 train. Bro. No, I'm not. Yeah, Let's go. Mark's buying a 270. Stand All right. By. Um, maximum diameter across the flats. 6285. So it's certainly not as bold as the lead counterpart, mm-hmm. uh, but it's doing something different, right? Right. So launch weight of 150. Tear it out. Tear Hold it out. Hold on. It doesn't need to be teared. It's at zero. 147.1. I mean, same story. Yeah, correct. So that tip probably has a little bit more material on it. I don't think we can sit. They can't see us if we sit. No, we kind of got to. Okay, we're standing for the rest of this podcast. It's good. You stretch out your, uh, your hamstrings. Hip, your, and your hips. I think it's good for your hips. Oh, good. Um, fantastic job. It does the trick. The weight retention is, you know, pretty astounding it between is. these two. And it, again, different bullets instructed different ways to do different things. Neither of them are wrong. Nope. Uh, depends a little bit on what you're looking for, your use case. Uh, I'd say most deer you pointed this thing at, they are quite Toast. dead with any of these projectiles. Toast. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Does it change your mind at all, the findings, Mark? They don't. It, it, <laughs> they don't. But you know me neither. Because I have a, I generally think of things right, wrong, otherwise, in terms of one gun to do it all. And to me, the odd six is just the better option there. So if you've listened this far... And even far, though the 270 will just do everything that I apparently needed to do also. If you've listened this far, Mark and I share the sentiments of each other. 30 out 6 superior choice. Because it is bigger, and it's not a 270. I've got nothing against the 270. I've got fond memories of the 270. You know, I, I have nothing against it either. 
But Mark, you make a very compelling case for the gun to do it all. We've talked about it on this podcast. That's not before. what this podcast was about, though. No, this was this, about you're right. shooting deers. This is we're unpacking this a little bit further. We're trying to validate the results we found. The 270 offers the shooter a few things that the Ot six Ot six doesn't, but the Ot six offers some things to the shooter that the 270 certainly doesn't. Right. Neither's a bad choice. Certainly they, not. They give and take in slightly different spots. I agree. And uh, therefore, depending on your use case, one, it's like one might be better than the other, but they'll both probably do the job. The fights in the comments are going to be awesome. What are people going to say? I have a 270. It's better for X, Y, or Z. Somebody say, I have a 30 out 6, two world wars. <laughs> it's quite the credential. That is quite the credential. Um, you know I have a love affair with the Ot6. One of my favorite rifles that I own is a 30 Ot6. And I just, it's hard for me to not reach for it. It just does everything I need it to do. But maybe I'll feel the same way about a 270 someday. For now. S- sometimes I wonder if the 270, if it's a m- little more like likely to give you uh, that struck by lightning effect. I see what you're saying. Just the sheer speed, velocity, shock. Well, let me ask you this. What if I introduced 25 out 6 to the chat? Would that be even more so? Maybe. Oh, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't have a 25 out 6. I don't either. Well. We were talking about that the other day, though. Pretty, I know uh, you were saying you were seeing a lot of those. Well, yes. Last Hunter Sighted event that we had, which is coming that up. That was surprising to me. Yeah. I, I see that one as uh, somewhat obscure, yep. I guess. But. Yep. Um, gold Classic. Great Western game cartridge, especially mm-hmm. pronghorn, iconic pronghorn cartridge. But it's certainly fine. My hunting partner's killed a number of dandy mule deer with a 25 out 6. Oh, I bet it would be fantastic yeah. for it. Yeah. So. It's a great, great round. Um, but that struck by lightning thing, you know, often viewed as a function of velocity on impact. Who was that? You know, speed kills. Who was that? Was that Roy Weatherby? Yeah. He's not wrong. wrong. 257 Weatherby. Right. You want to talk about a way to vaporize something? That's a, that's a speed demon. That's a great cartridge. That's not what we're talking about. Um, 30 out 6 V270. They're both great. I think they're both winners. Yeah. There. I said it. They don't call it a 270 lose. They don't. That's the only time we've said that in this podcast. I know. There's lots of, <laughs> there's lots of win cartridges. Yeah. All winners. They're all winners. Yeah. Well, Mark. I, I, we're dragging it out. I know. We're dragging it's, it out. It is what it is. 271 based on our parameters. Written criteria that we defined. <laughs> and here we are to debate that topic and tell you that we both believe all, that 30-odd sixes. All the way into the dirt, which both of these cartridges will put any deer that you shoot at into as well. That was nice. Thank you. Yeah. Well, there you have it, everybody. The uh, 30-06 V270 fully loaded podcast. Both these cartridges are definitely fully loaded. They're fantastic deer cartridges. I challenge you to uh, decide which one is better for deer uh, because, oh, dear, Ryan, we had a hard time doing that today. Yeah, this it was, it's just hard to talk about because they're both so good. Let's ask the, let's ask the people out there. Yeah. What are you shooting? Do you shoot a 270, an OT-6? Both? Do you shoot both? Maybe one for something, one for the other one? Which one do you think is the superior deer cartridge? Let us know in the comments. We want to hear it. Help us decide. And until next time, happy hunting and shooting. See you. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.